G'day everyone, welcome back to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos about the whole medieval period. We do analysis into events, who the key characters were, what took place, how it all went down, and what were the ramifications of these things. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. Today we're going to look at the Byzantine call for help. This was one of the key triggering moments for the Crusades. So, let's take a look. for roughly speaking 40 years 45 years before the Crusades really took place there was a thing called the Great Schism this was a, a catastrophic incident in the Christian Church and to be honest with you this the ramifications of this are still felt today roughly speaking 45 years before the Crusades really took off there was an event called the Great Schism Great Schism is where uh, Christianity in the eastern side, that is to say, centred around the Byzantine Empire. In those days, Constantinople, but today we know it as Istanbul. And there were a number of disagreements between the Christians there and the Christian church in Rome. A lot of these seem quite trivial to us today, but in those days, these were really big issues and they came down to the core of Christianity and how Christianity was best practiced, um, what shape would it look like, and, and how things were conducted. It's a very complex issue, as I say, and we'll get into that perhaps in another video in another time. But the ramifications of this was that the church actually split and you have the Roman Catholic Church and you have the Eastern Orthodox Church. This was a very bitter separation and it was felt for a long time. In fact, the ramifications of that still go on today. However, I find it very, very interesting that within living memory of that event, um, what then happened was uh, the Byzantine ambassador sought counsel from Pope Urban II uh, seeking assistance. The background to this, however, in March 1095 in Pienza, the Byzantine ambassador sought counsel with Pope Urban II seeking assistance. Now, unfortunately, we've lost what that looked like. Um, we, we don't know exactly what the Byzantines had in mind. Um, they were confronted by the Seljuk Turks. Now, to give you an idea of what was happening, Christian kingdoms from all around the world were falling. A lot of people don't really understand today, but most of the Middle East used to be Christian empires. Modern-day Libya, modern-day Egypt, modern-day Iraq, modern-day Iran, modern-day Syria were all Christian kingdoms. Now, of course, the map today looks very, very different to what it would have done in the Middle, uh, Middle Ages, but I'm, I'm sure you get the idea. Over 450 years, you saw very strong, aggressive tactics by the Muslims to overtake and overthrow uh, these Muslim kingdoms. And in some cases, these countries put up very little resistance. Now, I don't really want to get too much into the emotions, and please leave the topics, um, and please leave your comments civil and to the point. I don't really want to get into modern day politics, thank you. I think it's quite possible that the Byzantine picture of their assistance was a considerable force of Norman knights, uh, Norman men at arms, and a sort of a, a fairly strong mobile force. 
Uh, this is, to be honest with you, quite quite easy to imagine. You can see how devastating uh, the Normans had been in this time period. Only 40 years earlier, you saw the Norman conquest of England, and that went down very quickly. The Normans were able to muster extraordinary large numbers of soldiers for the time period. They were able to um, adapt. They were able to um, come up with tactics and strategies that were um, really quite devastating for the time period. So they were incredibly effective. The Byzantines were facing essentially a mobile force um, of the Seljuk Turks and so on and they had lost two-thirds of their lands. Modern-day Anatolia is, is an example. So we have some, some big issues here for the Byzantines. Now, we don't know how the, the, the Pope responded. We do know that he considered this and prayed on this for at least sort of six to nine months before really coming up with his plan. And we're going to look at that in a separate video. It's important to mention, though, that the Seljuk Turks were only actually um, relative recent conversions to, to the Muslim religions. Um, but they were devastating warriors. And as I say, very few countries had really put up um, much strong resistance to them. It's interesting, though, because we do know that Pope Gregory had considered a crusade. In fact, he had even considered leading a crusade himself. Now, that's I find really interesting. Um, so the, the whole concept of crusades is not a new thing. Uh, in fact, it has been going on for quite a long time. And in fact, if you look at it as a just war, then that dates back to um, 4th century AD with um, the theologian Augustine coming up with his definition of a just war. I think um, it's important to say, though, that nothing had really been um, envisaged as to what the Crusades ended up looking like. Um, and I think what was um, very much on, on Pope Urban II's mind was he could see Christianity fragmenting. It was breaking from the East, and potentially, I think, there was fairly strong indicators that there was going to be other fractures within the Christian Church and it's not what the Roman Catholics wanted. The Roman Catholics wanted a single Christian religion and we can see how that played out in the centuries to come. However, um, Pope Urban II, I, I think, saw this as an opportunity to unite Christianity behind a cause, to unite people from different countries, from different cultures within a single faith and say we have a singular enemy. Now that is not um, an unfair thing to say because um, the Muslims within um, a fairly short space of time, 450 years, had taken over roughly speaking half of the Christian lands that were uh, you know, on the face of planet Earth. Um, this was a big deal. Now, not all of these lands were, if you like, um, Christian lands, but their Christianity was the dominant religion. And not necessarily was the Christianity in some of these lands the same as Christianity in Western Europe, but they were Christian lands. So, I think the Pope had recognised that... Um, there was a very, very serious threat to Christianity. Um, Christianity itself could fracture. And in fact, Europe itself was under considerable threat at the time from the, um, uh, from the Turks. Modern day France was being raided. Modern day Italy was being raided. Um, and unless something considerable happened, then Europe itself was under considerable threat. So. That's a bit of a look at the Byzantine call for help. This was a very real problem, and here was an opportunity to unite Christianity behind a singular cause. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video.